Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. My name is uh, Tyler Stenkin with Cole Information, Cole Realty Resource, and I have Brian Eisenhower with us. Brian, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Tyler. Thanks for having me. You bet. Well, thanks for joining us. So a little about uh, who we are <clears throat> and a little session framework is I I've been with Cole for about 11 years, actually, and uh, we provide phone numbers for neighborhoods, uh, for ages to call around, just listed, just sold, uh, farming campaigns, things like that. But we've been around forever. So when I say forever, about 70 years. So prior to technology, we had agents that used us for a variety of different different ways in uh, law enforcement or police departments. So we printed these big blue crisscross books where, where uh, folks could look up a whole street. So let's say you're in Kansas City and you'd find Apple Street. It would tell you everybody who lived up and down Apple Street in house number. And and Ron, uh, or Brian, you guys used those in the past, correct as well, you were saying, huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, believe, yeah, I'm kind of dating myself a little bit, but uh, I've been in the business for over over 20 years. And when we started, it was before Internet, so we had a cold directory. And I, you know, I came into the business through my dad, who had his own brokerage and practiced real estate for almost 50 years. And uh, I mean, the cold directory, uh, the book uh, was a big part of his life because he knew the importance. I mean, that's one of the things that was fortunately instilled in me early in my career was the importance of uh, doing some sort of income producing activity to try to generate basis, business on a regular basis as well. So I've, I've had that fortunate upbringing and I've watched the cold directory transform all, to, all the way into the fabulous product it is today. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. So you could tell us a little bit about what, what you're doing, Brian, as well, and then we'll get started. And, and as we're talking, everybody, I want everybody just to kind of think about what your goals are for the rest of the year and how you're going to get there. So whether you're, you want to get – last year you did 10 transactions and, and you want to get to 20 this year, or if you want to add on one additional transaction per month or get from 20 to 30 or from 50 to over 100 transactions, what are you going to do? And so while we're talking, you know, what I'll tell you is most people will tell us is that you simply need to be having more conversations about buying and selling real estate with people that you do not know. But if you could kind of tell us, you know, what your thoughts are on that as well and and, and kind of a little history about what, what you're up to, Brian. Well, I think uh, the biggest, when we talk about goals, I think it's really important. And I've, well, I guess when we tell you in my history, I've been um, able to work with um, agents from a productivity coaching standpoint in one form or another throughout my whole career. Um, currently, right now, um, oversee the operations of quite a few agents in various offices in the Kansas City area. And one of my chief functions in that role uh, in overseeing is to actually get in and uh, coach coach one-on-one -on -one and in groups uh, and in training classes uh, on how to actually generate business. Because so many agents, when they get into real estate, um, they are so focused on business servicing activities, as they should be, because you need to learn those, and you need to learn how to handle a transaction, and you need to represent clients properly and with their best interest. However, that customer service, that business servicing department, we as agents, we are our own businesses, right? So we, we, uh, we, we are independent contractors, and we're running our business. And if all we have is a customer service department and a business, we're not going to have enough business to service in the first place. There has to be a marketing department too. There has to be something. There has to be some sort of daily effort that we put towards generating new business. Or if we're using goals like we've got up on the screen, um, they don't mean anything because those are just results. Those are not activities that drive those results up on the screen. So when we look at goals, we have to we have to start with what we have on the screen too. But then we have to be very strategic about tracking specific goals and expectations for the activities that actually drive those results. And in this case, we're talking about some sort of lead generation activity, a type of prospecting. Um, and there's lots of different types of prospecting out there too. Um, so yeah, that becomes a big factor in my life, in, in, at least in my job description, is trying to help people keep their, at least a portion of their day focused on some sort of lead generation activity. Absolutely. So when I'm talking to agents, a lot of times what they'll tell me is that they're dedicating time in their schedule every day for lead, for lead generation, to talk to people that they don't know. So everybody has their, their, their own database, whether it's you know past clients and people that you already know, people you went to high school with, went to college with, family, et cetera. But there's only so many people in your database. And so you need to be spending time every day to keep on adding additional people to that database. And so, for example... Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You hit it on the head. Yeah, and so what I love is that, so Eric John Meltenkoff, he's an agent in the New Jersey area, I believe, and he shared with me 
his daily schedule. And that's what he says is that every day he tries to spend, to spend time every day and, 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 and de- dedicating on this schedule. So, you know, what does your day look like? What's your purpose? So for him, he wakes up early every morning, you know, an early riser, 445, wakes up and he dedicates, you know, puts in a schedule, drinks coffee, meditates, wakes up, prays. From 5.15 to 6.15 for an hour, he exercises and eats a healthy breakfast. He's in the office every morning at 7.30. So for him, he arrives at the office and figures out who he's going to call that morning. So he downloads lists, different programs that he subscribes to uh, to get phone numbers. He then does role playing. So from 7.45 to 8.15 every morning, he role plays. From 8.15 to 8.30, he works on his mindset, so he reviews his goals. He watches, you know, videos, maybe a, a YouTube video for inspiration. But then from 8.45 to noon, every day he dedicates for lead gen. So he'll call expireds and fizbos. Then he'll call around just listed to sold and do his lead follow-up every morning. And so his goal every day is to make 25 new contacts, right? And to set two new listing appointments every day. And then additional stuff, you know, talk to two new real estate agents, you know, preview properties, add new people to his database. And then he actually schedules time to make sure to call his mom and Jessica. So he has time in there for family as well. No, oh, I love it. And that's, and a lot of people look at that and especially agents I've worked from the past when they're new to this, they see that, 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 that structure and that regimen and they get afraid of it. And, 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 and that's normal. Um, this is very purposeful activity right now, especially in this market, Tyler. I mean, we're in this market where, <clears throat> you know, houses are moving quickly. Buyers can't find homes to buy. We have a we have a very hot seller's market right now. So you can get very busy. Agents can get very busy. However, there's two types of busy. There's business servicing busy, busy where we get so busy servicing our active clients that we completely give ourselves an excuse to drop the ball on that type of uh, focus lead generation prep like uh, Eric had there. And so unless you protect that time to make sure, you'll shut your marketing department down during the busiest season in the last decade. Literally, this is the busiest housing market nationally, at least in the last decade. And you're shutting your marketing department down because you, your bandwidth is not big enough to handle any new business. But that's not true. And that's a limiting belief we're telling ourselves. What Eric's doing is actually making sure that he does his day by design here. Uh, up on the screen, it's beautiful. He protects it now. Agents that don't create this type of regimen, <clears throat> and they just they they do what we call doing their business by default. So they just show up to the office, and they they are not proactive like Eric. They are reactive. So they walk in, and it's all of a sudden um, business by crisis. Where we check emails, we check uh, voice messages, we check inboxes, we check text messages, and we just react to everything that's coming at us. Stuff that's coming at us is almost always business servicing activities, uh, transaction coordinating, and servicing existing sellers. That's business we already have, and that's good. You need to deal with that, but if you allow that to consume your whole day because you don't have a day plan like Eric, it will eat up your entire day, and you will have a justification that you can't carve out any time in the day. You're too busy to still try and get more business, and that's just a fallacy people are not as efficient as they think. Once they actually carve out and honor a calendar like Eric has, I'm telling you, they will see they're going to free up two or three more hours a day they don't think they have. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're going to talk here just a little bit about, you know, different lead generation that you can do. So, you know, Cole, we provide a way where agents can go in every morning and they can search for individual addresses. So if they have, you know, leads, maybe expireds that come up every morning. They can go into our system and search for that expired to try to find a phone number for it. They can uh, maybe search a street, a radius, a neighborhood to grab to grab phone numbers. Uh, but even if you don't use our product, there's still lots of ways you can door knock. There's still lots of people that you guys can can, can, can contact. But what we're going to talk about today is how to reach out to neighbors through the power of neighborhood calling, just listed, just sold calls. Uh, we have buyer campaigns. And what I want you to do is keep in mind that 12% of homeowners are planning to move within the next 12 months. So basically, one out of every 10 people that you're talking to owns a home are going to move within the next 12 months, within the next year. And the NAR has done a study, and I've seen different uh, percentages on this, that nearly 70% of every seller will only interview one agent to list and sell their home. And so... What are you guys doing to be in front of folks before they raise their hand and they want to list with somebody? 
how do you how are you creating that rapport to make sure that, that, that you're the one that they that they interview uh, and so there's different different people that you can call and so we're going to talk here uh, the first thing would be uh, about when you're making these phone calls or when you're door knocking etc I want you to keep in mind so Don Bass he's an agent in Mich Michigan and he shared with us and says the biggest thing I learned about scripts is that you want to get one of three things out of the call so by making the scripts geared towards those three goals makes it very simple to tailor the script to any situation so obviously when you're calling your goal is to get a listing appointment that is the ultimate goal with any phone call or door knocking any sort of lead generation activities but if that doesn't happen also then okay how about a referral oh your aunt is thinking about moving what's her number and if that doesn't happen then it's simply contact information and permission to stay in touch and so what he does and and, and I talk about Don quite a bit during this during this uh, webinar is because he actually did uh, 20 transactions in 2015 that he could directly tie to calling it to neighborhood so basically last march so march of 2015 he dedicated three hours every morning for about six weeks calling into neighborhoods and he this is the script that he used and then throughout 2015 he had 20 transactions and made about 120,000 in a gci tied to circle prospecting and all he would do is call neighborhoods with a script as simple as this you know hi this is tyler with xyz realty i'm calling up the neighborhood this morning talking with all the neighbors because I'm sure you're well aware we have very low inventory right now. We have buyers that are looking to move into your, into your neighborhood and there's really not anything to show them. So I was wondering, have you heard of any any of your neighbors that are thinking about selling now or in the near future? Okay, so very generic, just kind of a script calling to, you know, to ask them directly, asking if neighbors, oh great, thank you for thinking me for that. By any chance, have you thought about entering into this great market that we're in? Excellent. Once again, thank you for thinking of me for that. As a resident of this neighborhood, I believe that you're entitled to know what is going on. Would you like me to update you with sales prices that happen within your neighborhood? Great. What's a good email address that I can send the information to you? And I promise not to sell it to anyone and it will not bombard you. I hate spam also. I'll send you an update every four to six weeks. So what's your email? Okay, with that simple script, he called, like I said, three hours a day for about six weeks last spring and made $120,000 in commissions off of 20 transactions. And you're hearing the same thing too, right, Brian, with, with, with agents calling? Oh, yeah. There's all different yeah. ways to do scripts. Uh, the most yeah, is picking up the phone, right? Absolutely. It's just getting, getting the word out there. And a lot of people, um, I think the key is to back up. Even with the idea of using a script, um, a lot of people get very nervous about that. It sounds very salesman-y. And I think when you hear the word prospect, a lot of agents have inhibitions about doing it because they don't want to be a salesman. They want to be a consultant. And, and, and I think that we're missing you know, the point there quite a bit when we talk about being a salesman. And, and, and those two need to run hand in hand. Um, people, when they want representation to sell their home, they're going to be in negotiations, so they're going to want a salesman too. Uh, a, a good salesman, a salesman in the mind that I look at is someone that can aggressively market their home. I and mean, you're showing them that uh, ability by doing exactly what you're doing. They do not want someone who's just going to answer questions for them. They want both. They want the whole deal. They want full due diligence, a top-notch negotiating professional that is not afraid to put themselves out there. Um, and yep. this is the biggest asset in their life. And if you're just going to be a consultant, I think you need to get someone to help you aggressively advocate on their behalf and market their property. Um, so that's real important to me. Yep. So if this is uncomfortable, then this is something we need to get purposeful with it until it becomes comfortable again. Um, that's number one. If you want to be the full package and have the and have the ability to generate your own business, then you'll also often get a lot of negativity and resistance to prospecting too because they say, you know what, I just want to work a referral database. Um, and as you mentioned, Tyler, earlier, which you alluded to, was that these need to work hand in hand. When we talk about a referral database, which is a network of people that we know or that know us on some level that we can actually systematically reach out to and contact via email, telephone, um, text, drop by, mailer, whatever, and, staying, and we foster that book of business that we can expect a certain return from each year, a certain amount of transactions and referrals will come from this group of people. And as, and as my dad told me when I first got into the business, you can tell, uh, you can tell an agent's work, worth by the size of their database, and that and that's if they don't have a database, that means they're not organized enough to even try to to generate business. And if they do have a database, it's not very big. They're probably just new. Um, so 
we want to get a larger database. If that database of people that we know that we can systematically stay in talk, contact with and rely on receiving a certain amount of business from, the whole scary part about being commission-based and not knowing if you're ever going to have enough to get to your next paycheck uh, goes out the window because we have this steady book of business. And like the key, if the key is growing it, that means we have to meet, meet new people. Yep. That's the only – you can grow it slow or you can grow it fast. And the amount of prospecting, by definition, is we're reaching out and prospecting to people we don't know to make them people we do know. So when we talk about Don's three keys there, I love it. I mean, number one, of course, we always want to set the appointment. But if it's not there, there could be a referral out of this person or we could be adding a contact to that database to continue to grow that number. If we have 500 people in our database, we can expect twice as much business from 250. So let's get to 500. So if nothing else, this prospecting helps grow that foundational book of business that all other lead generation activities will grow from. And this is how you grow it. Yep, exactly. Uh, and and, and what I always say, too, is end of the day, if, if it's all about having conversations and, and get on the phone and talking with somebody. So, you know, with our product, we provide cell phone numbers as, a, as an upgrade. And so we have yes. landlines and cell phone numbers. And, and one thing I talked about with agents all the time is cell phones aren't going to be 100 percent accurate. They're going to be a lot harder to keep up with. Maybe you call somebody on their cell phone and they're a little bit more hesitant to talk to you. And so there's different ways that you can even do scripts where if, if it's, hey, I haven't been at the address for a few years. Why are you calling me? And and so I like to talk about this as well. I had an agent here a while back. I met at an event, and she had said that she had gotten three listings from calling a wrong phone number because she took yeah. it into fact what like Don was saying is the ultimate goal is to have a conversation with somebody, is right? And so I asked her like, what's what's sort of your script that you use when talking to these people? And so she actually doesn't actually even like ask for the person. She'll do something like this. Hi, this is Tyler over at XYZ Realty. This is a courtesy call. Did I catch you at a bad time? All right. So because what people are actually going to their, their answers are going to be twofold here. Yes, I'm actually walking out the door. Oh, OK, great. I'll make this real quick then. We just sold a house on 5900 South 72nd Street for 220000 And I wanted to let you know that we had a lot of buyers that came to the neighborhood, you know, went right on with the script. OK, and they said that they were busy or. Hi, this is XYZ Realty. This is a courtesy. This is Tyler with XYZ Realty. This is a courtesy call. Did I catch you at a bad time? No, what's up? Oh, great. I'll make this real quick. We just sold a house on, or I want to let you know that we have buyers that are looking in your neighborhood. See, the script was the same because of what she said at the beginning. This is a courtesy call. Did I catch you at a bad time? It lets people let their guard down a little bit as well. And then what happens is people will say, once you get into the conversation, you're 15 seconds, 20 seconds into it. I don't actually live in that neighborhood anymore. Or, you know, we haven't been there for a while. Oh, sorry about that. I must have some old data. What part of town do you live in now? How long have you lived there? What do you like about that neighborhood? What don't you like about that neighborhood? And then you start having conversations and dialogue. Yeah, no, I like it. And I think these scripts are, I mean, these are, these are tested scripts too. These are, I mean, these, it's not like you just sat back there and made these up, Tyler. These no, are scripts no, that work and they've been all. tested. Yeah. And you're generating, uh, you know, another touch for it, especially for the people, and you'll, you'll hear me airing on this side because so many people are, have trouble with reaching out and um, sounding like a salesman or in any way trying to, to bother people. Um, and, and, there, and, and I think what we're showing here is there is a way that a lot of this, when we're talking about looking for buyers and looking for other people, we're actually showing other people how we provide customer service to others. So one of the ones, especially in this market right now, we have a very, very hot seller's market. So especially if you are an agent that is in a large real estate office or in an office with other people, um, it provides a unique opportunity right now because the minute a house sells quickly, um, we have a script and dialogue, and the key is to transform the word I out of a lot of these scripts you see on the screen and put in the word we, e, yep. because we represents the whole brokerage. Yep. And if we say, hey, we were just, hi, this is Brian Eisenhower, I'm with XYZ Realty, and we just listed and sold your neighbor's home in four days around the corner. But because of all our marketing activities around the home, and I'm going to take a break here and say, I hope you did a just listed phone call around this thing. Uh, because th this might be your second touch on yeah. this particular neighbor, and that way they, this evidence is how hard you work to sell a home. Get that house it, sold, exactly. Right, right. Yeah. So we're actually, and, and catch with that, Tyler, that's customer service. You're evidencing your customer service to the neighborhood about how hard you work to sell a home. Exactly. Okay, and that's, hi, this is Brian Eisenhower uh, with XYZ Realty. We just sold your home, your neighbor's home around the corner in four days. Uh, we generate, uh, so I'm happy to say we generated so much interest 
in the home, we actually generate a lot of buyers that are looking to buy right now. And we're actually experiencing something sort of a housing boom, a, a market we haven't seen in 10 years where we just do not have enough homes to get to our buyers. In fact, I was in the sales meeting in our office uh, just this last week where about 100 agents raised their hands that they cannot find a home for a buyer. So what we're doing on behalf of all of those clients is I'm actually calling around to see all the neighbors because we have a lot of buyers looking to buy in this neighborhood. We do. Yep. We have a lot of buyers. Yep. So what I'm trying to do is see if you know yourself or any of your neighbors are looking to sell in the next year because if you are, we might be able to get that home sold with very little hassle, uh, maybe even without even putting it on the market. So you won't have to go through any of the hassle and cost or expense of getting the home and uh, getting the home up for sale. Yep. Um, so if you could spread the word, do you know anybody thinking to buy or sell? Because we've got buyers right now. And if you click through every single phone number, cell phone number, amazingly, on that, and with Cole, there's an upgrade that you guys have where we actually get email addresses, which has become legendary. That actually, Tyler, that when that news hit from Cole, that was a game changer for real estate marketing to me. Because yep. now you've got a target because that same script I just said can be composed in an email for free, hit the button, and I blanket everybody and we got buyer. Yep, so you can call people and then email them. And again, it's all the touch points that you're doing and you're showing all of the neighbors what you're doing. Oh, uh, it's genius. You know, and even if you have buyers, okay, it's showing neighbors at neighborhoods and, and, and potential sellers that you're calling on behalf of buyers. I mean, it's huge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tyler, I mean, we used to, I used to have a spiral binder when I started. And I use mechanical pencil, and I wrote these names down in no particular order as I got information. To be able to go and just send out an email blast is just unbelievable. I mean, the 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 the, the industry is turning more into a lead generation game with the advancement in technology than anyone could ever imagine. It's yep. phenomenal. Yep. And so when once you do get that listing as well, so once you get the listing, Brian, then I, I like what Don will talk about. He goes, "You got the listing. Don't just leverage it." exploit that listing because again absolutely the, the reason now is to let all the neighbors know that you did whatever you could to get this listing now you let let all the neighbors know that you uh, about a just listed call and now you can the have name of the game is listings yep. the name is the game is listings and the, and what we're doing here is by exploiting it of course you do have different sign laws <laughs> that, 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 that this town clearly doesn't, doesn't have no. however but you that you do want to stretch the limits of those sign laws because just imagine that we've had our house, uh, this house marketed uh, for uh, three weeks, let's say, okay? And everybody leaving and entering this subdivision sees these real estate signs and this fellow's name. And then they receive a phone call from this fellow that it was just listed, and then another phone call evidencing the success saying, hey, I sold it in three days. Do you have any other sellers? Yep. Yep. What's going to happen on that drive out of that neighborhood? The wife of one of the neighbors that wants to sell is going to say, honey, this guy really markets very hard. Yeah. He called me yesterday and they go, yeah, he did. And I actually saw, I saw he had a uh, open house yeah. um, last weekend as well too. And man, they, I mean, are you sure you want to list with your cousin, honey? Yeah. I know she's got her license and all, but no one seems to be working harder and getting more success than this guy. And this is our house. And that's how it works. You're showing your customer service. So what's ironic is people that don't want to prospect are actually the ones that are actually missing out on the opportunity to provide the highest level of customer service to their existing listings. Yep, yep, exactly. And what well, I love, what I love too, Brian, is that so for example, Eric John Milton Cop, he told us too is what I love about these phone calls is that they're so non-confrontational. You know, so yeah, you know, so he calls around an open house and he'll say, you know, hi, this is Eric with X Y Z Realty. I'm just calling all the neighbors of 102 Oval Road, inviting them to an open house tomorrow between. 12 and 1. A lot of times people in the neighborhood say, I have a friend who's looking in Pine Oak subdivision. I don't know if you're familiar with this home. He's in a lot of updates, completed, completely gutted the, the kitchen. Do you know someone who might be interested in buying something? And so what I love too is what Eric John says is that I'm not very polished on the phone. You know, so when I talked to him, he said, you know, he, he has tattoos up in both, both, both arms and, you know, he were, he's, he, he's not the most polished, but what he does is he picks up the phone and has conversations with people, and he has a lot of success. He had 100 and, 107 transactions here a couple of years ago in 2014, so it wow. definitely works. Yeah, no, and I think, and again, if, you, if we are in a situation where we are 
worried that we're going to come off like a salesman. There are scripts to tie it to customer service. We can always do it. We can modify any script. The key is the conversation. If you're afraid to say something, then, then there is a script out, for, out there for you to get it done. An example to kind of tie off the one we just took, like just calling randomly around a listing. There is a way to make that customer service too. And that's, hi, this is Brian Eisenhower. I'm an XYZ Realty. And um, we just listed your neighbor's home uh, around the corner for sale over on Cottonwood Street. And you see, we ultimately find that the ultimate purchaser of a home is a friend, family member, or acquaintance of somebody that already lives in the neighborhood. So since on the Brian Eisenhower real estate team, we're doing everything we can to try to get your neighbor's home sold, I'm calling to, to ask you, do you happen to know anyone looking to buy or sell a home? This is your chance to pick your own neighbors. Um, and we would love to get your neighbor's home sold for the highest price possible to keep your property values in the neighborhood going up. So can you think of anybody? You're and right. then the key there, gang, is to shut up. And you want to let silence do the heavy lifting here. Can you think of anybody? And then and they will be forced to start thinking, maybe a friend, a neighbor, a coworker. You can make a few subtle suggestions and then be quiet. And you will be shocked that they are seeing you're working they that you are working for your clients. Yeah. And that impact to show this guy's go getter, he actually does something other than just stick a property sign in the ground, put it in MLS, and hope someone sells it, which doesn't look like realtors do any work, you're going to be the only realtor in your area that's actually doing anything to market and sell your listings, and they're all hearing from you directly one-on-one, -on -one, which is just unparalleled and phenomenal. Yep, I agree. And and Aaron Wittenstein, he shared this script with us here a while back as well, Brian, and kind of went back to your whole We Have Buyer campaign, but... Uh, he, on a Facebook group that I'm in, he, he posted this and said, here's my killer uh, just sold script, three potential listings yeah. in less than a week. And so he said, hey, this is Aaron with XYZ Real Estate. As you probably noticed, we recently closed on 123 Main Street. It actually sold for $420,000. We're running into a problem since it sold so quickly. We have quite a few buyers who are looking to move in the, in the area, in particular, a young family with a baby on the way. I was just curious if you knew oh. if you were thinking about making the move or if you knew of anybody in the area that was looking to sell. And so See, I love that. I love, I love how he got personal. If you do have a client with, I mean, don't lie clearly, but if you have a client with a baby on the way, get that personal with it. Yeah. Uh, get that personal. And then you have other buyers too, because you have other agents and everybody needs listings right now. The inventory is so low. So that's phenomenal. Yep. And so I, I these are, for example, this is what folks have shared with us. You know, they'll say, I have a great family with two school aged children who would love to get into maxi elementary you know a client of mine is looking for a house in the subdivision so he can move his family closer to their in-laws or longtime clients of mine are now empty nesters since their kids are out of the house they can now move into their dream neighborhood they've always wanted to live on the golf course we're just looking for the right house to come on the market would you you know so very particular and or if you don't have something personal like that our company our brokerage we always have clients looking in this neighborhood right absolutely and then the goal with all these calls is to just build your pipeline. So again, it goes back to what Don said initially, to get a listing appointment, a referral, or permission to stay in touch. But then also ask, you know, question to create rapport and look, look for buying signs. You know, what do you like about this neighborhood? What don't you like? Well, we used to love this neighborhood, but then some college kids bought a foreclosure across the street and always have cars lining up, up and down. Okay, that's probably a buying sign there, right? You know, right. where are you from originally? What brought you here? Have you ever thought about moving back there? Oh yeah, we've thought about it. You know, how long do you plan on staying in your house? You know, and then during these calls, capture contact information, additional ways that you can get in front of these folks and then take good notes to help build relationships during your follow-up calls. So if they're talking about their kids or pets, or they're gonna go on a fishing trip here soon, Write that down because the next time that you have a conversation with them, you can ask them, you know, how is your boating trip to Canada? You know, how are the walleye biting? You know, things like that. And then follow Absolutely. up. And so what Don does you know, during last year, during that six weeks of calling where he called three days a week and made a, a three hours, a, a three hours a day for six weeks and made 120,000. He talked about how he actually did a handwritten thank you card to every person that he talked to. So he sent about 20 postcards out a day, very generic, you know, thanks for take, take, taking the time to talk talk with me and threw in a business card. And so just as a way to start that rapport, start that, that relationship, 
And with all this stuff, don't make it a sales call. It's it's a customer service type call. It's something that you're doing for your client, but don't make it a sales call. And it definitely works. And you're you're familiar with this guy, aren't you, here, Brian? Yeah, I know this. I know that. I know that character anywhere, right there. Yeah, he's in my office. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Ron, he's one of my good friend. He's one of my good friends too. Uh, awesome. And so Ron shared this with me a, a, a while back. Is that you know he takes note on every lead. So, i.e., son graduating from high school next year, gonna write that down and put it in his database. So the next time he talks to them, he can mention that. He handwrites a thank you to each lead, whether they're moving in two months or two years. Then he uses a CRM to continue the engagement. And so we'll mail out 12 postcards throughout the year to these folks, send emails, etc. And then he tries to personally make a phone call four times throughout the year to everyone in his database. So something like, I've seen a few homes recently sell in your neighborhood. Would you like me to send you some stats on what they're selling for? And what I love about this is he says, he finds out that most folks do not have an agent they keep that they keep in touch with. So by continuing to follow up, he gets them every time. And he actually used the word awkward. And he, it's almost awkward for some of these folks not to use him now because he builds that relationship so much through his follow-up phone calls. Well, we talk about that. I mean, the biggest complaint in the same National Association of Realtors survey of home buyers and sellers and buyers that you're referencing, they talk about the biggest reason that you know agents don't follow up is that don't don't communicate with clients is the biggest complaint we have. We talk about how many agents would use their previous agents if they had followed up, and it's 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 astonishing what percentage do not repeat with the same agent. And and they state that the reason is they just lose touch. They don't bump into them anymore. Ron's got his systems down where he has he he stays in touch. And and when you're doing that with people, they they're not in your database yet, it becomes a lead generation activity where you're growing that database. That's what Cole helps you do. Yep, absolutely. And he's a big fan. Of, I mean, he's a big, I remember when he started using Cole, and he's a big, big fan of it. And uh, I'm also, I'm disturbed. I hope Ron's on this call so he can't hear because I'd like to state that, man, that choice of tie, go back to that slide, Tyler. <laughs> Christmas ornament. That's a Christmas ornament around his neck. <laughs> I'm going to let him have it for that. <laughs> and, and I just you can do better. Uh, so in a while back too, so Amy Freeman, she's a customer of ours in North Carolina, and it goes back into you know different scripts that we've used uh, that we've talked about already here, here Brian. But uh, she put this in a Facebook group that I'm on, so I, I got her permission to to get the print screen of it. And so she said, this week I've been calling two neighborhoods that one of my buyers would really like to get into. We've seen everything in the market, and nothing fits their needs. Six kids, so I figured why not circle prospect to get my number of contacts in, find this awesome family a home, and maybe pick up some listings along the way who's with me. And so she shared with her success. So again, she picked up the phone and started calling. And so she had 174 dials in about three hours. She left 76 voicemails, talked to 46 people, and she actually got two listing appointments. So two confirmed listing appointments, because that's her ultimate goal here with making these calls. And then she had three additional appointments that were really, really good leads that she felt would become listing appointments really quickly. So then right away on the Facebook post, if people are asking, okay, well, what did you say? What was your script? What did you do? So it was as simple as, hi there, my name is Amy Freeman with Amy & Co. How are you today? I was just calling for a quick second in hopes that you could help me. I have a client that's been looking in the area for about six months now. We've seen everything in the market already and nothing fits their needs. They need to be in... Maxi and Pine Oak school, dis, school districts and your neighborhood is one of their top two. So I'm hoping that you have heard of someone in the neighborhood or at least those two school districts that may be considering selling soon. No, I am not asking if they are selling. They tell me when they are considering and this seems to allow them uh, to let the, allow them to let their guard down because I am not asking them directly. So I appreciate that. And then I've, I've taught a class like this uh, for, for a few years now, uh, Brian. And so one thing that I, I was, I'd always end with was, if you guys could do anything for me, just lock yourself in a room for three hours and make phone calls. I don't care what product you're going to use. I don't care if it's past clients or your whole high school class from, you know, 1995. Pick, lock yourself in a room for three hours and just see what happens. See what sort of how many leads you can get out of it. And so 
Kimberly Harris, one of, uh, she actually was a subscriber to our platform already. And so I saw her post this on some websites afterwards and got her permission to post them. And she said, you know, been in the business for a little over five years. And for the first time I called 100 homes prospecting using a just sold script. I made five live contacts who want to be added to my database. I plan to schedule four days a week. And then the next month or a couple months later, she's she posts again on them phones. I'm telling you it works. Doing some circle prospecting. 50 calls made. Talked to 22, 20 people. Two said they'll be moving the first of the year. Two said they're thinking about moving. And then the next month after that, talking about that she has buyers that are looking at a particular neighborhood. And I use Cole to let those homeowners know I have a buyer. By the way, it's a $500,000 price point. And so, you know, I was going to, could I add one thing to that, Tyler, oh, really please, fast? Yes. The one, the one thing I want to point out, when you, especially when you were referencing, I think it was three slides ago, Amy Freeman, I think she was from North Carolina, you said? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, she, she actually showed her results up there on the screen. Um, and now imagine, and I, I'm going to try to kind of keep tying this around to customer service, too. Now imagine if you have a listing, and one of the biggest complaints when you have a listing, if it doesn't sell, is that agents receive, which I don't think you should ever receive um, if you're doing your job right. But if a client is like, hey, what are you doing to sell my house? Why isn't it selling and they're blaming you? Yeah. Um, that is a big problem if we're having those conversations in the first place. We're not doing proactive marketing that they can see to evidence our worth at all. Um, and so they will get in denial on their price, and they will not reduce their price when they need to because they actually don't see that you're doing all you can. And that's important. So what I say, if you are a prospector, you need to use that. Um, so if you are, for example, you take a listing and you call all the neighbors in the listing for the just listing call, or maybe you're doing an open house call, right? You're going to call all the neighbors to say, hi, this is Brian Eisenhower with XYZ Realty. Uh, we just listed your home, your neighbor's home for sale over on 1234 Cottonwood, and we're having that home open as a neighbor's open house this Saturday from 11 to 3 o'clock. We want to make sure all the neighbors come by and take a look because you see we find the ultimate purchaser of a home is a friend, family member, acquaintance of somebody that already lives in the neighborhood. So we want you guys all come by and stop and take a look if we can because on the Brian Eisner real estate team, we do everything we can to get a home sold and no one's going to work harder for you. So I'm going to say that. I'm going to try to generate a lot of traffic because what do I want? I don't want buyers. I don't ever want buyers. I want listings, yeah. especially in the hottest sellers, sellers market in a in a in a, uh, in a um, uh, decade, so I, you know I might have a mortgage lender there to try to pre-qualify buyers or whatnot. But I want to shake some of these sellers' home hands and say the same thing to them: Who do you know that's looking to sell their home in the next year? Because we need more homes for sale in this neighborhood right now. This one will sell in about three days. We're going to get above market value. That's going to rise your property values. We need more to replace it to keep driving these markets these prices up. Now, imagine if we're actually calling around, maybe we call around the neighborhood for an open house. Maybe we're very diligent. The next week, we call the entire, maybe 150 homes in the neighborhood for, um, or say, just listed, then we call for an open house, and maybe we do a pending call. Can you imagine if we actually tracked that on paper and actually had a tally sheet so that we actually proactively contacted our sellers every single Friday at 11 o'clock and emailed them a tally sheet with proof that we individually called every single home in the neighborhood. Seriously, I'm making realtors look like realtors. They're not business people, right? Yeah. I'm going to make all of my competition look, wow, they don't do anything. This guy actually is picking up the phone yeah. and calling because my seller knows that we often find buyers from neighbors. People move into neighborhoods because they have people that they know that live there. That happens all the time. Yep. So, if, I mean, this is something that we can talk about for new home sales, too. If you're an existing neighborhood and you're marketing a new home subdivision, shouldn't you be working the existing neighborhood? I mean, who's going to get more buyers than you sitting a new model home in a huge subdivision? Um, you can sell resale out of there just as easy this way, too, by staying on top and kind of spot farming that neighborhood. Yep, exactly. But show the proof. Show the proof to your seller. Show the work. Show the tally sheet. Show that you've made the calls. Yep. Show the call printout. Yep, and then you go to the list on your next listing appointment. Bring those stats with you as well. And don't you think it's going to make you shine compared to if they are interviewing another agent? Absolutely. Here's what I did for your neighbors. Here's the results it generated. Here's how we sold the house in three days for above market value. We had three competing offers because we find that if we do this right when we put it on the market, in a hot seller's market, we can generate a lot of extra interest at the same time if we're calling around it and throwing it out on MLS. If we can try to get two buyers at the same time, we can get them bidding against each other to drive that price up nice and high and get you the highest amount of proceeds for the sale of your home. Yep. 
that's why we keep that's why we go the extra mile on the Brian Eisenhower real estate team. Yep, and we'll do the same thing for you. Nope, I completely yep. completely agree. So what I want to do here, Brian, if you don't mind, is I'm just gonna bop into our platform here real quickly. Yeah, and, uh, I love this. Just a quick tour of if you're looking for a source for phone numbers. Cole could be one of your choices to get those phone numbers. And then we'll open it up for some Q&A afterwards if we have a little time here, Brian, as well. So uh, with our system, you'd get a username and password. You could log in 24-7 whenever you want to. And you would ask, I'd always ask you for just a starting point address. So it could be a house that you just listed, just sold, or just in general a neighborhood that you'd want to call. So you put in that starting point address. And then it will say, do you want everybody up and down that street? To get the, uh, uh, the closest neighbors, do you want to do a radius and maybe say I want everybody within a quarter mile or a half mile, whatever that is, or you can actually map out a neighborhood. And that's what most people will do is they'll do this neighborhood uh, uh, map because it's it'd be similar to what like a, a, a subdivision, yeah. you know, yeah, to do to do a, yeah, exactly. So I'm going to pick that. I'm going to go in here and yeah. do only you really knows where where specific similar homes start and stop and when they turn into lesser or more expensive neighborhoods so on that map you can really outline the details of which neighborhoods you want to exclude and where you want the boundaries of your email blast or your telephone number list uh to start and stop geographically you're exactly so exactly so maybe i want on this side of the railroad tracks but not this part you know the older part of the neighbor the the subdivision and not the newer yeah. part, et cetera. absolutely so within yeah. seconds here, you'll see, I mean, it, it is literally within seconds, you'll see a result of, of your list. And so I had 926 people that showed up in the area that I targeted in that area. And then you could always go back and you can see here, it gives you a preview screen of what your data looks like. And so it has yep. your name, it has the, the addresses sorted by a house number and street name, and then you'll get a home phone. And a lot of people still do have landlines. About 50% of all homeowners still have landlines, especially in older neighborhoods. They'll tend yeah. to have more landlines. And then now we have a cell phone for about 50% of everybody as well. Again, those numbers are a little bit higher in some neighborhoods, lower on others. And then an email, as what Brian was saying, on about a third of all households. But what's nice about and, and that depends on the neighborhood, Tyler. I mean, I see yep. it in certain neighborhoods, it gets up to 60, 70%. It just depends. You're exactly right. Does. Yep, you're exactly right. It all kind of depends. Again, if it's a newer neighborhood, we probably have more, more emails because people yep. are a little bit more active online. And, and they have have free emails like Gmail and Hotmail that we're, that we're pulling here. And that's, yeah, you're right. It's newer neighborhoods. You can just tell younger people are going to have more accessible stuff. Yep, and they're going to have more I mean? cell phones to grab. We're, I actually personally live in an older neighborhood, and a lot more people do have landlines because they're above right. an age point, et cetera. So there's still lots and lots of people to call. And then to make the data actionable, you would actually you can actually pick different ways. So you could put all this data into Excel. Uh, and that way, once into Excel, you can put it into any CRM you're using, any dialer you're using, et cetera. Yeah. And then we actually are synced up with all the major dialers out there as well. So, you know, yes, if you're using are. Vulcan 7 or Arch or Mojo, any of those guys, you can put the data uh, in, in any of those dialers you might be using as well. Very easily, too. It takes about a second. Yep. So that's what we try to do. And so we're the data. So, you know, we do have a lot of people, too, Brian, that actually just lock themselves in a room. And, and pick up the phone and just call from a spreadsheet. And if you've never made a phone call before, that's where I'd encourage you to, to start. You know, just lock yourself in a room and start calling. And once you get it down, then you can use a dialer where you can, you know, obviously call a lot more people faster and drop voicemails and things like that. So absolutely, that's how our product works. So uh, price-wise, uh, if you mention this webinar, uh, you can get our best price, and that's three ninety five a year for landlines, and then it's eleven ninety five a year for landlines and cell phones. So it's about a hundred dollars a month when it comes down to it, and you can split that into three or four monthly payments to break up the cost. And when it's and it's truly unlimited, so you could go in every morning and uh, search addresses. If you maybe had partial leads from home valuation sites, you might be using. You can go in there and try to find phone numbers and contact information for those people or expired. You want to look up additional information or you could pull, pull a thousand names a day or a week for a neighborhood campaign or a hundred thousand names. It's com completely unlimited. So what I'd like to do is open it up from some Q&A if you don't mind, Brian, and stick around here. 
absolutely as well so to ask questions everybody you can go into your question box below and just type in the questions and we'll address them here uh, as for as much time as we can spend as well so i have a question right away asking how accurate is the data uh, and so i guess my little 30 second answer is it's not going to be 100 percent uh, landlines are going to be the best out there because uh, we're updating everything monthly and landlines you can get straight from the phone companies, the cable companies, etc. Those are traditionally 90%. Uh, agents will tell us if they're calling a combination of landlines and cell phones, it's generally around 70%, sometimes lower, sometimes higher because you can't just call T-Mobile or Verizon and say, hey, give me your list of 200 million consumers. So you're working off of third party vendors. If you think about if you're going to Jiffy Lube or or uh, get a warranty on your car and you're putting your cell phone number down, then those are ways that we would start getting those cell phones because people are opting in, providing those cell phone numbers. So that's about yeah, what I, I'd say. We have to treat this as a numbers game too. I mean, it is an absolute numbers game. You, you know, you're, you're gonna know that you're gonna call, if you talk to 25 people in one day, you might get a listing appointment from doing this. And of those 20, that means 24 people are not going to be listing appointments. Yep. 24 of them are going to be bad numbers. 24 of them are going to be angry people. 24 yep. of them are going to be people that just aren't interested. And 24 people are just going to be wanting to talk to you on the phone because no one's had given them human contact in three weeks. Yep. So that's, um, it is a numbers game and you just apply it through. There's definitely plenty of numbers to call. Yep. Even if you hit a neighborhood that doesn't have enough, if you just expand that scope or look at another neighborhood, I've never seen coal not have enough numbers. And the other thing I'll say is I've actually worked with almost every information source out there and just about every dialer he's mentioned, or at least I've had agents do it. And Cole does have the highest reliability of information of any program out there that service the real estate industry as far as I know, though, that's for sure. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, so like I say, it won't be 100% accurate, but pick up the phone and call. And again, if someone says, I haven't been at the address for seven years, oh, great, sorry about that, I'll update my information. Right. What neighborhood do you live in? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and just go right into it. So. I agree. So perfect. Uh, I have a kind of a question, I'm trying to paraphrase the question here, Brian, is, you know, how successful are agents, what sort of success are agents having with using Kohl's products or just calling neighborhoods in general? And uh, Tremendous success. I mean, tremendous success. I mean, I, I always try to say that people get, you know, you want to at least have 50% of your business coming from your database. And then, you know, the other business wants to come from people that you don't know yet that you're adding to your database, kind of like a savings account for later on in your in your in your career. Um, but no, I mean, this is, uh, it's part of an entire marketing platform too. It's not their only marketing platform. This should, you know, of course we always want to work a database. We don't want to ever ignore that. Um, sometimes we're farming. It helps, geographic farming is phenomenal with farm. It revolutionizes, with coal, it revolutionizes it in fact. We can actually export an entire neighborhood of their emails, cell phone numbers, and phone numbers, addresses. We can export them from coal put them into our customer relationship manager or CRM and then systematically email them and mail them and call them with regards to every just listed, just sold, open house, closed, market update, happy 4th of July, Merry Christmas, hey the pools are opening this weekend, there's a block party around the corner, come to the Mother's Day thing at the HOA clubhouse. I mean it is revolutionary what we can do and this, this is not just a they are tremendously successful, but it's often a, an accoutrement, like a, a garnish to another lead generation plan, or it can be the whole lead generation plan. There's so many bits and pieces you can pull from. Yep, and, and I'd say it all depends too. We have agents that will only call, you know, an hour a week. Well, they're probably going to get less leads from agents yeah. dedicating 15 hours a week from calling. And so, you know, I had a, a Jeff Hallam. He's an agent in the Nashville Nashville market, and I remember I was at a, a training event here a couple of years ago, and. He came behind my back. He recognized me as being the cool guy and came and patted me on the back and said, I owe you $12,000 in commissions, Tyler. And I was like, well, tell me, Jeff, why is that? He goes, I never believed in calling around just listed, just sold. My coach had been telling me I needed to do it. The first neighborhood that I called had about 50 people that I could call around a just listed. And the lady said, I saw you just listed that house. My wife and I are thinking about it as well. Or my, my husband and I are thinking about about it as well. Can you come over tomorrow? He went over the next day, got them to have a listing appointment. So he sold them a home, then had to help them buy a home. And they actually bought one of his homes in his listings. He had three transactions from one of those phone calls yeah. in the Nashville market. So, yeah, it's, just, it's, it's actually picking up the phone and having those conversations. That's the big deal as well. Absolutely.
All right. Well, I don't really see any other questions here, uh, Brian. So I think we'll wrap it up. We're right at 50 minutes, which I think is about perfect. And let everybody get back and do some lead generation for the rest of the morning. How about that? Sounds great to me. All right. Well, thanks again, everybody, for joining us. Uh, if you want information, please call our 800 number. That's 800-800-3271. Uh, the website is coalrealtyresource.com, or you can email us at your success at coalinformation.com as well. So thank you much and make it a great 2016. Make it a great year. Thanks, guys.